I will seek clarification on that. Corley can apologise for the, the, the lateness of the statement, and it should be in place in members' pigeonholes as we speak. And apologies to yourself for um, for it not getting to you sooner. It's obviously it's a rapidly changing situation, and things are evolving. So um, we're trying to be as up to date and give people as much information um, as possible. I'm making this joint statement today on, on behalf of myself and the First Minister. The entire executive is behind the enormous efforts being made to keep us all safe. I want to thank you for accommodating our statement today. We recognise that our people need information and that we have given a commitment that we will update the Assembly and our people as often and as speedily as we can. Undoubtedly, things will change and develop on a daily and um, certainly even on an hour-to-hour -hour basis, so we're going to need to keep people up to date to keep people safe. Very sadly, we had our second COVID-19 fatality yesterday. The thoughts and prayers of all of us across this Assembly will be with the families the family of the loved ones who, of, who have deceased. The current situation as, as of um, 2 p.m. on Sunday, the 22nd of March, testing has resulted in 20 new positive cases, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 128. The total number of tests completed is 2,484. Our messages today are simple and they can't be repeated often enough. And can I commend all elected representatives for trying to get that message out there to their communities? Stay at home if you can, wash your hands. If you have to go out, practice social distancing. Stay apart, protect our health service so our health service can protect us. These are not normal times. <clears throat> this is a time for cool, calm heads and for big, warm hearts. The First Minister and myself were so grateful to everyone who did the right thing yesterday on Mother's Day, despite the difficulties, but they did the right thing to keep mothers and other vulnerable people safe. We definitely understand the difficulty that there was for many, many people, but it was really heartwarming whenever you saw a number of images of people, how they got in touch with their mums. And we're grateful to all those mothers out there who actually worked on the front line in critical services for us yesterday. This is a demonstration of us at our best. We know there are more difficult developments to come, and in our families and our communities there is confusion and there's hurt. There are financial worries about our loved ones and worries about our neighbours and our communities. Please, uh, we are asking everyone to do the right thing, to carry on doing the right things in the weeks ahead. Extraordinary times need extraordinary steps, and ministers and officials are meeting every morning and will be offering very regular updates to the Assembly and to the media. We have made the health and well-being of our citizens our number one priority. Our economic well-being and the well-being of society are also at the heart of our discussions. We need to maintain, as far as we possibly can, other critical services, and we need to look after our people who are working on the front line. We are taking part in COBRA discussions, and the announcements from London are being supplemented by local solutions and we need the, that we need for the problems that we are facing here. We are looking far beyond the normal ways of working and policy development and how decisions are made. We are doing things now in days and hours what would normally have taken months and weeks. We are being responsible with our finances, making sure that decisions are quick and the front line has what it needs to keep people well. That requires new, real-time thinking, and it is absolutely the right thing to do in these circumstances. We are work working across departmental boundaries in, a, in new and important ways. To be absolutely clear, it is the top priority to protect our health service because they protect us. We need to slow down the spread of COVID-19 by keeping the pressures on our health service to an absolute minimum. We must make space for our health service to look after those who we will need care, who will need care now and in coming weeks. That is so vitally important. This is about keeping people alive. This is about keeping people alive. This is about making space for our nurses, for our doctors, our hospital cleaners, our social care staff to do their job and follow their vocations. We are asking an awful lot of them now, so we need to do everything that we can to support them. Other key decisions, such as the closure of schools and limiting pupil attendance to key workers, are focused on protecting our health service so that they can protect us. We totally appreciate that this is a difficult situation for parents. Please think about and understand the motivation. Closing pubs and restaurants is about keeping people well and protecting our health service. We had, a clear, we had clear requests to pubs and restaurants on Friday to please close. We were grateful to all those who closed their doors to those who distributed their supplies to those in need and to those who are looking after their staff. We say to parents and to young people, please do the right things now that the schools are closed. 
Young people are not immune to COVID-19. COVID does not care about your age, so you need to care about yourself and the potential for you to catch it and to pass it on. Young people need to follow exactly the same advice. The schools are shut, but education, learning and planning for your future should be at the heart of what you're doing in the coming weeks. We are asking parents to help get our advice across to young people. Stay home, wash your hands and stay apart. The economic support which, is coming, which will be coming available will help cushion our businesses and family incomes. It will help to keep our economy able to function again when normality finally returns. But we are conscious that we can't entirely insulate ourselves from our economy, from the pain and the hurt that COVID-19 brings. It's a dreadful disease with dreadful consequences. But there are many things we can do now. The Minister for Health has already taken steps to free up resources in our health service to provide hospital care for the most seriously COVID-19 patients. All non-urgent services have been reduced and steps are being taken to make greater use of the telephone and other digital technology for patients who need follow-up as outpatients. Trust will be working to ensure prompt discharge of medically well patients from hospitals to ensure beds are available for any increase in admissions. Initial support measures have been announced for businesses, both in terms of grants, the support around workers' salary costs and the measures to provide relief around rates. These will provide much-needed breathing space for our business community. We are continu continuing to work with the British Government to further enhance the assistance available, and we are lobbying hard to ensure our businesses and workers receive the support that they need. The Minister for Education has taken steps to close schools to pupils, with the exemption of those pupils who are children of key workers who have no other alternative childcare provision. We appreciate that this causes disruption, but it is a necessary step. The Minister for Education is working with the Council for the Curriculum of Examinations and Assessments and other awarding bodies to put in place robust processes for awarding grades. We also recognise that there are a number of vulnerable children and young people in our education system. The Minister for Education and the Minister for Communities are working together to put in place alternative arrangements around free school meals, and we expect to hear more about that throughout the course of today. The Minister for Education is also working with the Minister for Health to ensure that vulnerable children and young people in the education system continue to have access to the services that are necessary for their well-being. The Minister for Communities is working to develop a COVID-19 Community Contingency Fund to help groups who are supporting those who are socially isolated, struggling financially or who can't access food supplies. She has also made arrangements to spend face-to-face -face assessment for benefits over the next three months and has temporarily removed the waiting period statutory sick pay and new employment support allowance claims. The Minister for Infrastructure has temporarily relaxed the legislation around drivers' hours. This will be an important measure to ensure that supply chains can continue to operate effectively and to maintain flows of food and vital supplies. This change now applies to the items being delivered directly to consumers' homes and will help support those who are self-isolating. The Minister of Finance and the Minister for the Economy and the Minister for the Infrastructure, Infrastructure are also working hard to support our airports and are pressing the British Government to provide specific support for the aviation sector. This sector is facing significant challenges at present, but it is vital to ensure that air connectivity is maintained both in the short and longer term. Our aviation industry will be essential in the times ahead. The Minister for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs has put in place measures to protect citizens and staff accessing DERA direct services. We also recognise that to ensure the best response, we must not work in isolation. Through the North South Ministerial Council, we have agreed that everything possible will be done in coordination and cooperation with the Irish Government and our Executive, and with the active involvement of the health administrations across both jurisdictions. And a total societal approach is the only way forward. Every single person in our society has something to do. Every single person in our society has a very important thing to do now to help us to beat COVID-19. We need all people to follow the advice. Stay at home, washing hands and practical social distancing. We need responsible shopping. Please, please do not be involved in irresponsible shopping. There is enough food to go around for everyone. Be generous to others by only buying what you need. Leave supplies on the shelves for the elderly, the vulnerable and our frontline workers. We do not need our nurses and our doctors after working long shifts and all of our people who work in the health service are hospital cleaners and those who look after the most vulnerable for our families and for communities to, at the end of a day to go to the shops and not be able to buy food for themselves or for their families. <clears throat>
Please be kind. Look out for your neighbours and the most vulnerable in your communities. If we are able to, leave one or two items in the food bank box in your own community. I suspect most, if not all, families have had to think about how they would cope if this situation unfolds, or as this situation unfolds. And I would be confident that most, if not all, people have already thought about how they can help someone who is less fortunate. We can do these good things because we are part of the giant spirit that makes this a very special place. This situation will bring out some wonderful acts of kindness of that, I have no doubt, and we can see that already. At the end of this, we all want to look back and say that we all did the right things. Tougher times are coming. We can look at other countries and other places in the world to know that we are only at the start of what is going to be the most difficult of times. We can't make this situation go away unless we all do the right things now. Every day where we don't follow the advice, the risk increases. Please help us to protect our health service and our health workers so that they can help us and our families. We realise that we are sending out very difficult and very worrying messages, but we will get through this. We will get through it when we work together. We will come out of this. We will come out of this because we have looked to every part of society to play a role. And that is because this is a great place and we have such a wonderful spirit in our people. Can Corlea, myself and the First Minister and the entire executive recognise we do not have all the answers today. We are working tirelessly to do the right things. We are asking all of our people to work with us and to do the right things. Our commitment to the Assembly is that we will keep you up to date as things develop. We thank you again for the opportunity to update you today. Thank you. And I call Colin McGrath. Much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Deputy First Minister and First Minister for the update from the department today. And I also echo the condolences that are sent to the family.